There was once a British car empire to rival the might of Leyland and BMC. One so vast it wholly controlled its dealer and distribution network. This almost forgotten giant is the Roots Group, the empire that grew from a humble bicycle shop in 1895 into the second largest British car manufacturer by the mid-60s. By 1971 fortunes had changed and thanks to the mismanagement at the hands of Chrysler, the once proud Roots Group would collapse. With marks such as Hillman, Humber, Singer and Sunbeam, once a common sight on our roads, confined to the history books, and a bright future extinguished with thousands of jobs lost. There are some Roots Group cars that are lost to time, some that never made it. Incredible concepts such as the Swallow, an advanced rear engine saloon intended to replace the best-selling Minx, the Slug, a prototype for the Roots Mini competitor, and the incredible lost Avenger, Wrighton's Capri, the R429. This is the story of some of the most incredible lost prototypes, projects and concepts of the Roots Group. Hello everybody and welcome to this video. If you're not subscribed already, please make sure to do so. It really does help me out and you get to see more of this. More interesting projects, more conversions, more prototypes and my own projects like 2600R, my Rover SD1. In this video, we are exploring the incredible lost world of the Roots Group prototypes and do you have any Roots Group memories or know of any more missed opportunities? And what's your opinion on some of the cars featured today? Let me know in the comments below. Drop a like on the video if you liked it, but without further delay, let's get into the lost world of the Roots prototypes. The Roots Swallow The Swallow was designed to be a direct competitor to the Ford Cortina with a twist a mid-engine, and an innovative stiffened body shell. In the 1950s, Roots was gearing up for a replacement to the successful Audax Hillman Minx, a car that at the time was an incredible success, and with a new small car offering the Hillman Imp nearing completion, Roots knew a lineup change was needed. But interestingly, at the same time, BMC were in the same boat, and had just commenced work with the design firm ERA to create an advanced saloon design for the new decade of the 60s. This project would be a challenge to the BMC team for new ideas from ERA. The result was a rear engine family saloon, with the engine serviceable through the back seats and boot. At the time though, there was another innovation in the works, the Mini, and with that, the new rear engine saloon was dropped and not explored further. ERA would then go on to be purchased by Solex, which unfortunately had no interest in producing cars, and would instead research fuel systems. The designers of the BMC saloon would jump ship shortly after this, going on to join the Roots group. The new team headed up by David Hodkin would join Roots, which at the time was looking to the future, and how to reinvent itself and its range for the new decade of the 60s. Something extraordinary would then occur. Hodkin and his team were given complete freedom, and chose to continue the concept that had been abandoned by BMC years earlier. But with a twist, the engine would be mounted at the front. The result of these efforts was the Route Swift, a car that would be powered by either inline four engines or a V8. This would be done with an innovative twist. These engines were mounted ahead of the front axle, years ahead of the 80s Audis that employed the same concept to great success. Sadly, management would step in, as the production of this new car would be difficult thanks to the packaging of its new powertrain. As a result, management requested a rear-engined layout similar to the up-and-coming Imp. The design team complied, in a roundabout way of course, and instead opted for a mid-engined layout, with the engine mounted just behind the rear seats, but as before, ahead of the axle line. Unfortunately though, the V8 would be dropped at this point, it was found near impossible to mount a V8 engine while still maintaining the dimensions required. In 1963, the project would progress further, with the Swift becoming the Swallow, with Roots asking Coventry Climax to produce a new engine based on the 1220cc FWE unit, keeping the car as close to its smaller stablemate, the Hillman Imp, as possible. The Swallow's engine capacities were then finalised, designed to use the 1250cc, 1500 and 1750cc newly developed Coventry Climax overhead camshaft engines. That same year, a prototype emerged with two boots, a smaller rear luggage compartment and a larger one under the bonnet. The car was styled by Rex Fleming. The body engineering was light and stiff, 
thanks to the development in conjunction with pressed steel. Under the skin, the car had a 1250cc overhead valve inline 4 engine with cooling mounted at the front. In order to service the car, the rear seat needed to be removed. Unfortunately for the Swallow, at the time the Roots Group were seeing their empire crumble. Thanks to the government intervention and move to produce the Impa Linwood, the company was seeing its once stable foundations buckle under the sheer financial pressure. Two years earlier, a strike took place that would unfortunately set the Roots empire on the path to disaster. In 1961, a strike at the company's steel pressings plant crippled production for three months, resulting in 50,000 cars not being produced, a shortfall in production that it simply couldn't afford at the time. This was one of the most critical times in the Roots Group's history, and the worst had happened. These strikes, funnily enough, at the time were reported to be due to job security concerns. Little did they know this would set the Roots Group on the path to destruction. In 1962, Roots posted a loss of £2 million, around £53 million today. Now at the critical stages, the Swallow was in jeopardy. And with all of these factors in play, the Swallow was cancelled, with the company deciding to go with a more conventional Hillman Hunter. The risk of this innovative new approach to the saloon car was simply too much for the crippled Roots Group. The project was cancelled in November of 1963. After this, the prototype produced by Pressed Steel would get its first run in 1964 and would be used as a technical demonstrator. The lone prototype was then mothballed with the Roots Group's new bird never heralding the new fruitful spring that the company had hoped. The prototype survives today in the Coventry Museum of British Road Transport. It is not known what happened to the Swift prototypes or the BMC ERA design study, but they are believed to be destroyed. The Swallow serves as an interesting snapshot into Roots at a true make or break time. The Avenger R429 Coupe. The Hillman Avenger, the replacement for the best-selling Minx and winner of the duel between it and the Swallow project would be introduced in 1970. It would even go on to have a second life in North America as the Plymouth Cricket, which funnily enough would be discontinued just as similar cars were gaining market share in the US. Back at home, the Ford Capri and Opel Manta were dominating the Everyman Coupe market, and Roots, now Chrysler UK, decided it needed an answer to the ever-growing popularity of these models. It would then produce probably one of the most beautiful Avengers ever created, the R429 Coupe concept. A new transatlantic feel accompanied the Avengers styling elements. This car would emerge as a design model in 1971. Sadly, as is commonplace with Chrysler UK, bad decisions would win out, and instead of following the ultra-successful strategy of Ford and Vauxhall, they would cancel this project, with only one model produced. The car that could have sold well and funneled sales to other associated models was canned, representing another lost opportunity. It is not known what happened to the model of Wrighton's Capri Beta, but it is believed to have been destroyed. The Avenger Liftback Another Avenger was also proposed to accompany the saloon and five-door estate in 1970, the Avenger Liftback, R424. A smaller hatchback version that predates the Chrysler Sunbeam, but would eventually become it. By 1970, Chrysler owned a substantial part of the Roots empire and wanted to make the most out of their investment in the Avengers development. Initially, progress on the new liftback was slow and thanks to Chrysler pulling the plug on investment in new models, it would then be cancelled. But that wouldn't be the end of the liftback. In 1975, Chrysler UK would be bailed out by the UK government, thanks to, in part, the liftback Avenger. It was understood by both parties that Chrysler UK needed to produce new models, more specifically a Super Mini. The Avenger R424 would then see the light again, becoming Project R424 to be developed further by the Whitley design team. Under Roy Axe, the new body would be created for the original early 70s design, with the result being the Sunbeam, which used a substantial amount of Avenger pressings, including the door skins. The Avenger Liftback would finally get its day in the sun as the new 1977 Sunbeam, the Roots ASP. The Roots ASP is a mysterious sports car, a spin-off of Project Apex, the Hillman Imp. The ASP was a collaboration between two greats, Jensen and Roots, to create the ultimate imp-based sports car. 
Before the imp's introduction, testing had revealed how versatile the imp's platform and unconventional rear engine layout could be. The engineers would also find the new all-alloy Coventry Climax overhead cam engine could be tuned to sports car performance. In 1962, a meeting took place between two industry giants. Jensen Motor Company, responsible for incredible cars like the later Interceptor, and representatives of the Roots Group. An agreement was then made between the two parties. Jensen would take the imp and create a sports car in collaboration with the team at Roots. The assumption was that ASP would be produced at a rate of 500 units per week by Jensen. The engine would be either the standard 875cc or a new 998cc version of the imp's overhead cam alloy engine, mounted at the front. The body would be made of steel with the option of producing a fiberglass version if steel proved too costly. Tim Fry, Bob Soward and Ron Wisdom created the styling of the ASP, a sleek two-seater with vacuum-driven pop-up headlights. A prototype was produced by Jensen and Roots for testing with a fiberglass body but based on the IMP platform with a 998cc engine. According to Tim Fry, it was an incredibly fast car with great handling, but sadly Chrysler, who were at the time buying up shares in Roots, would remark it to be a silly little car, even though at the time the MG Midget and Triumph Spitfire were dominating the US market for small convertible sports cars. And with that, the ASP was done for. The project would be cancelled in 1966. The ASP prototype would be retained by Roots. The prototype car is a mystery in itself. During testing, it would be badged as a Ferrari to confuse photographers and would be road registered as 7862KV. The ASP would be sold to Alan Fraser Engineering with the prototype last seen at a show in Scotland in 1999. It is speculated to exist, but only one has been accounted for. The other, Hillman Imps. In this section we will be focusing on some of the most mysterious Hillman Imps ever made, from the Zagato Zimp to the Slug, and an imp that probably would have beaten the Mini if executed correctly. The Hillman Imp. The small car built to go head-to-head -head with BMC's Mini was its polar opposite. The Imp had rear-wheel drive with a rear-mounted engine, as opposed to the Mini's front-wheel drive and transverse front-mounted engine. The Imp's beginnings can be traced back to 1955, starting as an innovative two-cylinder car to help the masses beat fuel shortages caused by the Suez Crisis. Hillman had been trying to build a small car since 1939, First came a car named Little Jim, the grandfather of the Hillman Imp, in 1939, a small car concept led by Craig Miller of Roots Group. This car was created to be the economy car of post-war Europe, with a 750cc engine. The car had a total length of 11 feet. A prototype would be completed in 1938, but sadly there is not much information known about Little Jim, with his story lost to time, but if you know any more information, let me know in the comments below. Next came an innovative economy car in the mid-50s. The Slug, the brainchild of Michael Parks and Tim Fry, after the request of Roots' management to create a small, high-volume car. The Slug was a challenging small car, it was designed to be an ultra-economy car with a two-cylinder Villas engine, mounted at the rear, and bubble car styling cues. The slug was an adorable little thing, first designed with the eyes close together and then further apart. Sadly, this new baby car would be dropped, as the Roots board felt it would not maintain the quality associated with its larger stablemates. This car was created as a direct response to the petrol shortages of 1956 and 57, caused by the Suez Crisis. Sadly, it is not known what happened to the Slug or Little Jim. Project Apex would then begin with the progression of the Slug into the Imp prototypes, with the first one being named Little Jim, in homage to the Little Jim of 1938, and a second Imp progressing towards the one we all know today. There is, however, another Imp redesign. The final Imp design would take place years after its introduction, in a similar way ADO 16 and the Morris Nomad came about. A hatchback version of the Hillman Imp was also explored. It is speculated if this version would have been launched earlier, it would have given customers another reason to choose the Imp over BMC's Mini, but sadly it was not meant to be. In 1977 the Imp would be replaced with the Chrysler Sunbeam. The Zagato's Imp the Zagato Zimp was an elegant evolution of the Hillman Imp. 
taking a relatively unassuming small car to new heights of elegance. But even though it had been agreed with Lord Roots that these incredible cars would be produced, Chrysler UK vetoed the decision. In 1964, with the blessings of Roots, Zagato would set up British Zagato Limited, headed by Peter Thomas and Anthony Charles. Peter Thomas would buy two imps from a dealer in Oxfordshire, a white car registered CUD180B and a red one, CUD181B. These two imps would be the basis for the conversions. These two cars would be driven from the UK to Zagato's design studio in Milan. Another car was then acquired, a red deluxe, registered 9053PG. In just nine months, these cars were converted to Zimps and exhibited at the 1964 Earl's Court Motor Show. Styling was by Aircall Spada, the same man who created cars like the Zagato Aston Martin DB4. Italian style and British ingenuity would meet to produce the Zimp. The cars would even be lightened by £200, with plans to tune the imp engine to 46 brake horsepower up from its original 39. The body shell was 128cm high, shaving 10cm from the original, making it more streamlined and increasing its top speed to 86mph, increasing the top speed of the imp by 6mph. Public interest was high thanks to the accomplished studio and the new offering, but Chrysler would then purchase more of the Roots Group. Lord Roots had agreed to provide imps for Zagato UK to create Zimps, but with his death at Christmas of 1964 and Chrysler swallowing up more and more of the ailing Roots empire, the project was cancelled. Thankfully, all three of the Zimps live on today, with two owned by Mike Hanna, who purchased both CUD181B and CUD180B. 9053PG was owned by Franco McCree and was restored in autumn of 1997. The car would appear on eBay in February of 2015 with the final bid being for £8,865. The reserve was not met. The Sunbeam Venezia, an Anglo-Italian beauty based on the Humber Scepter, is another example of Italian styling meeting British ingenuity. Roots' Italian headquarters in the 1960s was run by George Carlos, who at the time was investigating the idea of producing a sporting saloon for the Italian market. George approached his British counterparts in spring of 1960, and after approval and partnership with Touring of Milan, an Italian coach builder, the project's initial sketches would be created, and by the end of 1961, Lord Roots would be presented with a one-tenth scale model. After this, approval was given for a full-size prototype to be built using a Hillman Super Minx chassis. The first Venezia would be completed by the end of 1962. This new car, after being transported to Roots in the UK, would be approved by Lord Roots, thanks to its incredible styling. A contract would be signed to produce 300 cars, with the running gear and chassis from the Humber Scepter. The engine would be tuned to 88 brake horsepower, 8 bhp more than the standard Scepter's engine, and would have a claimed top speed of 109 mph, beating out the Scepter by 19. The new Sunbeam would be unveiled in Milan in September 1963, and on the 12th of September that year would be launched in a suitable place, Venice. The perfect accompaniment to the incredible style of the new Sunbeam. Unfortunately, it is not known how many of these incredibly rare Roots cars were made, during the two-year production run, it is believed around 140 were produced. The story of the Roots Group is one of triumph, with the popularity of the Audax Minx at home and the revelation of the Arrow series both at home and abroad, with the Hunter being produced in Iran as the Paykan until 2005. The lost cars of the Roots Group demonstrate the incredible talent of the people who made them. But on the other hand, the tragedy of the Roots Group show how the missed opportunities, missed management, government intervention and short-sightedness can destroy a once-proud empire.